All right, folks, Pitching Ace 88, and we are back. One criminal case on Facebook. We are on Pacific Bay Case 54, Blood Diamond. Let's head on to chapter number three. Hey, Ace, I've discovered one of your suspects is lying about their true identity. You have a con artist on your hands. Um, well, that could be any of them, Hannah. What'd you discover exactly? Well, it's the Sheik, Ace. Sheik Faisal is not from the Middle East. He's just an actor who was born in Pacific Bay. I discovered it by accident. I was watching a compilation of failed Ivywood auditions. I suddenly spotted your sheik as a young man auditioning for an advert. So Faisal is just some failed actor? But then why is he going around pretending to be royalty from the Middle East? And if you lied about that, what else is he lying about? I agree, Ace. We need to question Faisal. No more acting. This time it's for real. And you're right. We should go back to the Menagio basement. That's where our victim was tortured. It may yield more answers. It may. Time to drop the act, Mr. Faisal. We know you're not a real sheik. You're just a failed actor from Ivywood. What is this nonsense about? The king of Sultanistan will be furious to hear you're doubting the identity of his delegate, Marshal Ace. Well, the real king of Sultanistan would have you beheaded for this fraud, mister. Be grateful you only have Marshal Ace to answer to. Or do you want us to let the king know about this? No, please don't. All right, I admit it, I'm not a real sheik. But I'm as good as the real thing. I spent years working my Arabic accent, and even learned Middle Eastern knife throwing. I do it because it's good for business. People respect a foreign millionaire. They aren't afraid of advancing some money to someone who's already rich. And you thought you could get some money out of Merv too, didn't you? Yes, but I didn't realize Merv was a con man too. I guess that's how he knew I was a fake. Ooh, Merv found you out. Is that why you killed him, so he couldn't expose you? would have been awful for business, but I didn't kill him. I may be a fraud, but I'm not a murderer. I've got to say, your acting isn't so convincing anymore. If you did kill Merv, you can be sure Marshal Ace will arrest you before the final curtain. So we can find here. Uh, candle. Sheriff badge. Cell phone. Nope, there's sheriff badge. U.S. flag and metal crate. Way to go, Ace. You found the victim's phone. Do you mind unlocking it? I'm such a duffer at this. But are these the items that you were used to torture Merv? Ugh, how gruesome. Do, do we really have to search through them? God knows what we'll find. I don't really want to... I don't really want to search. Nope, Merv's cell phone. This should be definitely uh, some good information. Nope. Should be... There we go. Nice. Deft hand, Ace. Now that you've unlocked the victim's phone, Hannah will be able to process it. I'm confident she'll be coming up with something that will help us nab the killer. Oh, me too. Me too. Ooh. What's that? Interesting. <sighs> I'm glad you're searching through this box, Ace. Just the thought of those tools being used to torture the victim. It makes my blood cold. I wonder how this bulletproof vest ended up in that box, though. You're right. There's a faded message pinned to the bulletproof vest. If it's linked to the killer, we need to retrieve it. This is true. Oh, snap. Ace, the message on that bulletproof vest was written by our victim. Message reads, you're going to need this, Eugenia. 
Why would Merv threaten you, Eugenia Hessentrope? Whatever his reason, Merv's the one who ended up dead. Come on, Ace. Let's go question Eugenia about this. I know people have said that maybe she's part of the heist of the century. I don't know, man. That's crazy. Eugenia, Merv's always found this bulletproof vest that Merv sent you with the threat that you would need it. What is this all about? Merv's the first person who told me that people were plotting a heist targeting my casino. He offered me his protection, but obviously, knowing his criminal record, I refused. He was furious. He thought he had an ace up his sleeve, but if he'd ever bothered to play blackjack, he would have known the house always wins. Except Merv really did have important intel about the heist. Did you torture him in your basement to get the information out of him? You think I'd be stupid enough to torture someone in my own casino? Please. But you think Marshall Ace would find out about that? You thought we'd assume the murder had taken place at the motel, where you display his body as a warning to other criminals. Well, that's a beautiful image and a good idea, but sadly, I can't take credit for it because I didn't do it. Now, if you excuse me, I have a casino to run. Alright. Fair enough. Fair enough. Anyways, guys, I gotta wait nine hours, so see you guys in a little bit. This is Pitching Ace 88. Au revoir. Alright, folks, Pitching Ace 88, and we are back. Plunk criminal case on Facebook. Let's finish this phone off. Okay, I've done processing the data from the victim's phone, Ace. Found a bunch of messages between the victim and Louis DeRico. They talked about a secretive undertaking. They argued about the infrastructure and security details. Louis DeRico, Ace, what if this is the undertaking is the upcoming thief? Let's go grill Louis about this. He'll probably lie to our faces again, but we still need to try. Could not agree with you more, Amy. Gotta try. She came from Kentucky in a busted pickup truck. Nice tune, Louie. It'll keep you busy in prison. We know you and Merv were scheming, judging from the text you sent to each other. Is it the big heist we're talking about? Oh, come on. You're still stuck on this heist conspiracy thing? I'll tell you the truth. The undertaking is just a blackjack tournament I organize every year. That's all. Oh, really? Why were you discussing security then? Look, lady, I don't mean to be rude, but it's man stuff, all right? Like a stag party. Card games, lap dances, brandy, throwing knives. We don't want the girls to find out, that's all. Anyway, it all fell through because of Merv. The guy couldn't keep his mouth shut, and I have no use for a man who can keep a secret. So you tortured and killed him because he betrayed his secret gentleman's party? I'm too busy for small-time revenge, Marshal Ace. I have bigger fish to fry. Merv had it coming, but I had nothing to do with his death. Uh huh. Yeah, he doesn't really have a badge, so it's not him. Ace, I agree. Not even Frank would buy Louis's story about a secret party. I'm sure the undertaking was more than that, but how can we prove it? You're right, the only thing we can do is keep investigating. The clock is ticking. Ace, we're almost there. One last effort and we'll have Merv Wayland's killer cornered. You know I'll follow you anywhere, Ace. And if you say we should go back to the crime scene where we found Merv, then let's hit the road. Booyah. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna try and use this. I'm gonna try and use cash and see if I can get one star and one. You have to be really really quick. Let's see if I can be really quick. All right, so boom, get Beatles up there. I've got to read them real quick. Pile of magazines. Oh, crap, I thought that wouldn't have been a clue. Flip flop. Don't know. Chocolate bar. No. Okay, lizard. Flip flop. Flip flop, where are you, flip flop? Ah! Didn't get it, I'm sure. Ah, so close. That darn flip flop, man. Flippity floppy. So, what'd you find, Ace? Don't be coy. I always knew you could spot clues that other people would have overlooked. File of magazines. Well, like I said, I have overlooked that. Let's have a look through it and see what's hiding underneath. And I agree, this briefcase doesn't look like a vacation luggage. Quick, we need to unlock it. No problem, let's have another 15 hour and another nine hour investigation. Boom. So, ooh, it's like, oh, I love it. Heisenberg, oh, who's that? Lady Pretty, ah, just, sorry, getting distracted there. 
You hit the jackpot once again, Ace. The practice target you found among the magazines might have belonged to the killer. After all, they must have practiced a lot to get so good at knife throwing. Let's send the target to the lab and see what Young can come up with. We're close, I can feel it. Let's see, nine hours, okay, makes sense. Probably gonna have to open up something and then dust it off or something maybe. Or are you, yeah, we're gonna have to open it and then we're gonna have to look in it. Okay, that's EB, ED7, okay. Uh, G, oh no. Uh, no, 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 this. Wow, look at that. The briefcase you just opened is full of throwing knives. This must belong to the killer. And you're right, the briefcase is covered in some kind of dust. Quick, we need to collect a sample. It can tell us something about the killer. What is that? Is it like... Flakes of gold? I'll take that into evidence. Yellow powder. I hope it's gold. Excellent, Ace. Now we collect a sample of this yellow powder in the killer's briefcase. We can send it to the lab. This might be the missing piece of the puzzle. It's one of the last two of the puzzle. Anyways, guys, I will see you guys in 15 hours. This has been Pitching Ace 88. Au revoir. All right, folks, Pitching Ace 88, we are back. Let's arrest this killer. Hey Ace, this practice target was definitely used by your killer. The straight tears or tears match the victim's knives that were found on your victim. The tears, the tears, the tears also help me determine the velocity of the knives the killer threw at Merv Whalen and the curve of. Well, Jan, that's all impressive, but we already knew that whoever killed Merv was natural at throwing knives. Can you tell us anything we don't know? Well, there's no residue on the target, but the logo on the top left corner provokes proved useful. Turns out the target was part of a gift package handed out to VIP guests at the gun convention. These guests were also given a special badge. So that means our killer must be wearing a gun convention badge. They'll be an easy target now, Ace. If I don't. Blood diamond. Well, I'm done looking at that powder you collected from the killer's knife collection, Ace. In the powder, I found traces of club soda, dish soap, and natural compound, which has an atomic number of 79. Atomic what? Is that some kind of nuclear bomb? No, Amy. Atomic numbers indicate that the number of protons found in the nucleus of an atom. In this instance, I was talking about gold. As for the traces of club soda and dish soap, they're often used to clean gold jewelry, which the killer must therefore wear. Gold jewelry quickly discolors if worn close to the skin, and therefore needs a regular cleaning. So I'm guessing the jewelry in question is a gold chain. So our killer wears a gold chain? Well, we'll soon replace it with a ball and chain. We've almost got him, Ace. <laughs> I gotta say, I, I personally I think I like Amy more than Frank. What do you guys think? Well, this is it, Ace. You've compiled enough evidence to arrest Merv Whalen's killer. Let's go call their bluff. Gosh, I... Is it the... She is it the... Is it him, the Sheik? Yeah, it is. Oh, is it her? No, it's not her. Yeah. Oh, and I guess I was pronouncing it incorrectly. My apologies. Uh, I think it's, they said Shake Fasal. Sorry. Well, once we figured out that he was a con man too, I, I mean, it kind of led me a little bit to think it was him. But this was a this was a tough one. Everyone had a good motive. Time to lay the cards on the table, Faisal. We know you killed Merv Whalen. How dare you accuse me of murder, you peasants? I have diplomatic immunity. You can't arrest me. Uh, we know that you're not a sheik, but an actor, remember? Oh, yes, that's true. Sorry. I've spent so long perfecting my act that it's become second nature. Well, some of the clues you left at the crime scene gave a glimpses into your real self, like your death threat on the door hanger disguised as a blackjack challenge. Playing blackjack isn't against the law, Marshal Ace. What's next? Sending me to prison because I like country music? Well, funny you should mention that. You listened to one of your favorite records while you tortured Merv in the Menagio's basement. We've got proof. What kind of demented person would do such a thing? Well, not me. I wouldn't hurt a fly, let alone torture someone. Mr. Faisal, there's no use denying it. We've got your practice target and Marshal Ace even found your knife set. What did you want from Merv that was 
worth torturing and killing him for? Was it only because he threatened to expose your Sheik Khan? Ha, of course not. It was because of the diamonds. Oh, drats. I said too much, didn't I? All right, Marshal Ace. This got me already. So I might as well tell you everything. As soon as Papa Kwanzaa landed in Paradise City, I knew my lucky day had come. He was a perfect target for my Middle Eastern gun mag magnet sagam. But that weasel Wayland got there first. That guy had no integrity, poaching his fellow con man's client. So Merv Wayland got his hands on Papa Kwanzaa's diamonds before you did, and then you tried to get the diamonds from Merv by torturing him? Yes, but Merv was stronger than I anticipated. He chose death rather than confessing where the diamonds were. Well, the good news is that you won't need any diamonds in prison, Mr. Faisal. You're under arrest for Merv Wayland's murder. Mr. Faisal, you stand trial for the torture and murder of Merv Wayland. But according to the coroner's report, you were innocent of cutting off his finger. Was that an accidental oversight? I just wanted to know where he hid the diamonds, Your Honor. I didn't count his fingers. Look, all I wanted in life was to be an actor. When it didn't work out, I became a con man instead. I was good at being a fake sheik. I had a real flair for it. I put in the work, the research. Not like that slimeball Wayland who had no talent. When I found out he managed to cheat Papa Kwan's out of his diamonds, I swore I'd make him pay. Well, Mr. Faisal, maybe the role of a convicted killer will suit you better. This court hereby sentences you to 30 years in jail. All rise. I mean, he's, he's, six, he's, he's already 60 years old, so that's fine. I mean, he'll be in prison until he dies. Ace, hey, well done for putting another criminal behind bars. Seems like everyone in Paradise City is pretending to be someone else. Fake sheiks, con men, scamming, and plotting everywhere. But you're right, we still have unfinished business to attend to. The heist of the century might already be underway. Let's head back to the station. There's no time to lose. That's right, guys. We only have like two more cases, which essentially means that, that the next case is the last case before the big heist. So join me for part four. Thank you guys all for watching. Thank you guys all for coming Patreons. See you guys all in a little bit. Over and out.